Hello, students. Tis I, Mr. Shea, of your computer, or whatever device you are watching this video on. All right. I hope everyone is doing well, and uh, you have your note sheet. If you don't have your note sheet, don't worry. Below this video, there is information that YouTube has provided you, and there are the terms that you should follow. So please follow those as we go. All right. Today we are looking at the dawn of humans, um, and here we have an image from modern day uh, humans, though so they are living in Africa, a hunter-gatherer tribe, and a lot of the characteristics of uh, humans, prehistoric humans, are shared with tribes such as these, like the San in uh, Namibia and Botswana, that exist today. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So early humans, and we're going to be talking about different groups of these early humans, they developed in Africa. And if you look at this map here, here are some of the different groups of humans that existed. And these humans, or species of humans, um, developed over millions of years. So evolution goes very slowly. And some of these groups existed millions of years ago. If you look at the very bottom, you see the A. Africanus. The A stands for Australopithecus. Um, and Austro Australopithecus Africanus, they existed 2 million years ago. Um, and this is what they look like, or according to scientists. On the right-hand side, you can see one that says P. Boisei. Uh, and that is, uh, kind of looks like this. And those groups uh, existed 2.3 to 1.2 million years ago. So we have a great range of humans. And it, it's not until we have a genus, a group of uh, species. So if you look at your sheet, it says Homo genus. And a genus is a category of species. So every species has a different genus. And for us humans, our category is homo. So human beings, if you look at on the screen right here, are homo sapiens sapiens. So the genus is very broad, and the, the next word brings it down more specifically. So it would be like, your first name is very broad, your last name narrows it down. So uh, it's really how we identify different organisms on the planet. So Homo sapiens sapiens are the most advanced form of uh, the Homo genus. There's other, there's Homo erectus, which was a previous extinct species. Um, we have Homo sapiens, we have Homo habilis, uh, Homo neanderthalus. So we have a bunch of these different species, which are all now extinct, except for the Homo sapiens sapiens. And Homo sapiens sapiens were the first ones that said, or somehow communicated, and we believe that they have the power of speech, we'll get into that a little later, uh, to leave Africa. So there's this theory of humans left Africa, and they Scientists believe, and they call this theory the out-of-Africa theory, that humans left Africa between 1,000 or 100,000, 125,000 years to 60,000 years ago. So scientists believe 125,000 to 60,000 years ago, humans left Africa. And if you look at the map here, there's that belief they left up through uh, the north eastern part of Africa into Asia and into Europe. So this is a current satellite image of the world, and they went right through here. Scientists believe that. There's also a belief on the next map that no, they went through the northern part of Africa. So scientists are really guessing at that, but those are the two guesses. And from there they spread out through the rest of the world. Initially first into Europe, and then uh, started moving eastward through Asia and eventually into North and South America. 
And as they moved, uh, they had these humans had uh, a number of tools. So Homo sapiens started to develop tools. And the development of these tools really brings in a new era, a new era of humans that we call the Paleolithic era. And it's a period of history. So if you want to write next to technology right there, Paleolithic, P-A-L-E-O, L-I-T-H-I-C. The Paleolithic era is really defined by humans having tools. And they use these tools to change their environment and really start to survive in a better way. And stone tools, stone tools are the first types of tools that humans really develop. If you look on the left, these are some basic flint pieces. And it's just a piece of flint that's been broken off and the nature of flint creates these small pieces that are very sharp on the edges. And you can use these to cut into things, carve things, different uh, uses like that. And on the right, you have a more advanced tool. It's called a stone hand axe. And the stone hand axe was able to especially cut into meat. You could also carve different objects with it. But really, it allows humans to cut and shape objects however they wanted. And it takes a lot of time to make a stone hand axe. As you can see, it could have many uses. Fire, also important, as you notice from the map, humans start moving north. So Homo sapiens start moving northward in the continents, and it gets cold up there. So having fire is very important to keep warm, and also to cook uh, different foods. And we'll get into some foods in a minute. Socially, humans, the Homo sapiens, are getting more organized. They're building structures, as you can see on the left, instead of just sleeping under trees or in caves. So they are shaping their environment to fit their needs. On the right, you can see a group of uh, Homo sapiens that are getting together. Scientists believe that in the Paleolithic era, we have groups of 25 to 30 humans traveling around. And when you have groups of people, you start having different beliefs. So religion starts to come into play. This is a cave painting of a half man, half animal. And there's some scientists believe this shows that humans are thinking beyond what they can see and thinking of uh, some sort of religious figures that helps explain what happens in the world. Also, they start seeing uh, humans being buried. Instead of simply being left where you die, There's these two humans' remains were found that shows that people put them there, that maybe there was a ceremony that buried two people together. So religion, as people start getting together, uh, religion and, and customs start evolving as well. And finally, food, because we all are hungry now, thinking about uh, the past. On the right, you see some grapes. Fruit was especially important when it came to diets of early humans. And we're going to really get into the foraging and thinking about these hunters and gatherers, gathering whatever food they could find in their environment. And that included fish. You could go fishing. This is a large catfish. Uh, picking up mussels. These are mussels that you could find by the seashore. So humans really were mostly small animals. They're not hunting really big animals yet. Uh, they don't have the some tools. Certainly they will, and a few are. We have that spear thrower we looked at in class. But it's a lot of gathering what food humans can find. So that's early human society, and we're going to really be exploring those different groups and what it meant for humans in the coming week.